Greetings, everyone. Rob Chastner, continuing in our study of the uh, pastoral letters of Paul. Uh, and if you're following along, you'd want to open up to 1 Timothy chapter 4. We'll begin with verse 9. And as we continue this study, uh, if you believe that you are not being called into any kind of a ministry and you don't think that this study has any value or meaning to you, uh, then... Um, I think you ought to reconsider uh, because we have a tendency to think that way, but yet there are so many practical applications in these verses today for how we are to uh, live our lives. Um, there are older um, uh, uh, people in the uh, temple, in the, um, in the church. There are younger people in the temple of the church. And so uh, Paul is giving us warnings and exhortations in, uh, in these uh, letters, and we need to hear about them today so we know how to treat other people. Paul began chapter 4 with the idea that things like food and sex are things which God designed uh, to give us in order to have enjoyment and pleasure. And anyone who comes along and says something like, if you stop having sex, you'll become more spiritual. Or if they say something like, you know, we have this super duper diet plan. And, and if you do this diet plan, you'll become more spiritual. They're not speaking the truth. They're not speaking according to the word of God. And as long as food and sex that you're enjoying is within the parameters of the word of God, uh, that does not make you any less spiritual. If someone comes along and says, you know, if you're not celibate, you're not as spiritual as I am or something like that. Or if you don't eat the kind of food I do, you're not as spiritual as I am. Paul says to Timothy, run fast and run far from that person because that person is teaching you something that's not from God. It's originated from hell, from the devil. And you get away from that person. And the second warning Paul is telling Timothy is that there's some degree of benefit in exercise. So if you attempt to live fit and trim, you're going to live a bit longer. Um, and if you keep your weight, uh, your weight proper, it's easier for your joints and your skeletal frame. And maybe you can weather those twilight years uh, that many of us are entering into more gracefully. There are benefits to that, yet Paul's exhortation to Timothy is that there is a, a sense of balance in a person's life. It doesn't make sense for you to take all of your time and all of your effort and all your treasures to pour into the resources of your physicality here on this earth for 60, 80, 100 years uh, and not prepare yourself for the eternal realm. Because after 60, 80, or 100 years, you're going to, your body is going to go back to the dust of the earth. So it doesn't make sense for you to focus all of your money, all of your time, all of your effort on your physical being and not develop, uh, put your resources into the development of your spiritual being. So Paul tells Timothy, exercise yourself in godliness. Now, what is godliness? It means godlikeness. It means that we are resembling God. We resemble the characteristics of God. Those personality traits will be reflected in your life. Now, if you're exercising, you'll gain strength. If you exercise godliness, you're going to become more godly. Now, remember that authentic Christianity is not about being weird, but rather it's about being godly. And so, therefore, how does one exercise themselves in godliness? That's what we have in this study. Paul gives Timothy six things we need to do uh, in order to work uh, in our workout routine in order to become more godly. All right, so the verses will be in the box below the video. If you don't have your Bibles, uh, press pause and read verses 9, 10, and 11, and then press play once again. The first thing that Paul is telling Timothy, he is reminding him that you've got to keep focus on the target. What is life about? Life is about using us to impact people. And this is done when we demonstrate faithfulness in our lives. 
how many of us have been impacted by somebody who has been a faithful person, just an ordinary person in our life who has been faithful to God and they had a tremendous impact on us. That's what Paul's talking about here. All right, verse uh, 12, please read, uh, press pause, read, and then come back. So second of all, he is telling Timothy, get over your insecurities. There were people challenging Timothy likely because of his younger age, and perhaps Timothy was giving more of an ear to the criticism uh, than he should have. Maybe, you know, he was whining a bit uh, about, uh, you know, people won't listen to me. People aren't respecting me. You know, Paul is saying, you know, take the thumb out of your mouth and uh, quit listening to everybody, what they have to say, and focus on your relationship with God. Everybody's going to be critical and give opinions. Forget about that. Focus on your relationship with God. Paul is saying stop listening to opinions and stop listen, listening to commentary and start listening to God. Stop listening to what people say and start listening to what God has to say. <clears throat> you remember King David, he was told by his dad, you're nothing, you're worthless. His brother said you're a troublemaker. You stir things up. King Saul said you're too young. Uh, for this job, Goliath called him a dog. You know, so at any point, what what if what if David listened to all these people around him? Uh, he didn't. He focused on his relationship with God and he became a, a man great in in history. Paul is telling Timothy here, God has called you to be an example, and that original word in Greek for example has the meaning to impress. It has to be leaving a mark upon someone. It's the same word that Thomas used when he said, I'm not going to believe Christ was raised from the dead until I have uh, put my, my prints, uh, uh, see the nail prints in his hands. So we are to leave an impression uh, or make a mark on other people, just like the spikes made on the hands of Jesus when he was hung on the cross. <clears throat> so um, I'm not going to believe <coughs> the same word using uh, using here is being used here. Uh, Timothy, you are to leave your mark upon the believers and to leave your mark, to leave your impression upon others. Now, how are we to do that? Uh, by your words. What comes out of your mouth goes a long way to either impress someone positively or impress someone negatively. Um, you're either encouraging or discouraging people. So take note of what you're doing, what comes out of your mouth. Then he gets into lifestyle issues, our behavior, our love, our attitude, our faith, our purity. Listen to a quote that was written by a governor, the governor of Bithynia. He's writing to Caesar, telling Caesar what Christianity is all about. Remember during this time, Christianity was growing like wildfire. It was spreading throughout the Roman Empire. And now Caesar wants to know, is this a problem? So this governor of Bithynia writes, quote, there are, they are accustomed to binding themselves with an oath, not to commit thievery or robbery or adultery, neither to break their word, neither to, to, uh, do they deny a pledge that they have made when summoned to answer it. For Christian pledge is a life of purity. Again, the, what the Lord is calling us to do uh, is that we are to demonstrate our allegiance to being like Jesus Christ. All right, so the number three uh, on the list, uh, read verse 13. So press pause, read 13, then come back. He is saying, don't forget the basics. Uh, you know, we're suckers for wanting new and shiny things. You know, in our culture today, we get bored. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, churches are going for laser light shows and they're going for bigger and better, you know, bands and this and that and the other. He's just saying, stick to the basics. Now, um, uh, we've been, we've been uh, uh, gathering in the church for 2,000 years, praying, reading scripture, and exhorting one another. Uh, that's what he's saying. Stick to the basics. If you want to grow in godliness, never forget the basics. It's prayer. It's word, the word of God, it's exhortation, exhorting one another, encouraging one another, loving one another, 
and doing good works for one another. The fourth is uh, in verse 14. So read 14, press pause, and then come back. Paul is going to encourage Timothy to do a couple, uh, to do this on a couple of occasions. And the Greek structure here would indicate that he is continually neglecting his gift. He has made a lifestyle to turn his back on what it is that God has called him to do. Human nature would say, well, it's too hard. It's, you know, I'm not making many friends. Uh, this only is producing grief in my life. I don't think I want to do this anymore. Uh, you know, every time I go there, I get yelled at. My feelings are hurt. I don't want to do it. And so Paul is just saying very strong terms here. Knock it off, Timothy. Quit neglecting the gift that God has given you. Um, now, to point, the point here is you don't need to be tricky. You don't need to be cutting edge. You don't need to be culturally reveling. You just need to be faithful to the gift which God has given to you and use it to impact other people in the community. All right, the fifth on the list is in verse 15. So read 15 and then come back. Give yourself entirely to these things. Now, again, remember, this is all in the context of making an impression upon other people. If you want to make an impression on your children, your grandchildren, your co-workers, whomever, you have got to give yourself wholly. You know, if your faith walk is not a big deal to you, you're not going to be an impression or make an impression upon other people. So give, your, give, it, give yourself entirely. He says in verse 15, your progress may be evident to all. That word progress, some of your Bibles might say profiting. It has the meaning of advancing or progressing. In other words, people are going to be able to figure things out without you saying anything. They'll look at you, they'll see your behavior, they'll see your speech, and they'll fully understand what you're all about. All right, verse 16, the next on the list. Read verse 16, press pause, and then come back. Paul is saying, you just need to be concerned with yourself. Be, you know, when you, when uh, we become so concerned about what other people say and think about us, uh, that it, it captures our attention and we stop focusing on our own spiritual growth. If I'm concerned that they, uh, that they are not doing what God wants them to do, and pretty soon my, 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 my life can be consumed with what's wrong with you. You know, Paul is saying, stop looking at other people and and being concerned about their spiritual growth. Focus on your own spiritual growth. Um, so uh, it's possible to have a saved soul, but a wasted life. There are a lot of people who have who are saved, but their lives are wasted because they're not paying attention to their own spirituality. So. Um, uh, you have to set yourself free out of your own chains, your own bondage, uh, rather than focusing on fixing other people, you focus on fixing yourself. Um, Paul is telling Timothy, if we would allow God to impact our lives by doing these six things, then God is going to be using us to impact the lives of other people. So ask yourself, are you profiting? Uh, you know, are, you know, am I spiritually profiting so that it becomes apparent to other people? Is that what is going on in your life? Um, you know, remember that the greatest advertisement for the kingdom of God is a changed life. There is nothing which will get our attention quicker than somebody uh, who has authentically been changed. And when you see those changes, you become curious. What Paul is telling Timothy here, God has sent you to the city of Ephesus to impact the community, to impact the church. And the way to impact that community and church is to first of all, allow God to impact your own life and to all God, uh, uh, to, uh, to allow God to, to make you a godly, a godly man. And then the way that will happen is by exercising yourself in um in godliness all right i hope this has been helpful and informative um and uh thank you for viewing good day